policy conducted by the LME Association Department of Commerce. Today, we have with us Dr. Biju Ewi, the Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, University of Kerala. He'll be handling the session on financing markets and services and investment manager. management. Over to you, sir. Uh, okay, uh, good evening to all. Thanks for the introduction given by Bhagavadi. Uh, I hope I am audible right now. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, well, uh, crucial item, uh, there was a lot of PSC uh, examination. I don't know if you have a month's life. No, madam, I can't say name either. ഒരു ടൈമിലൂടെ കടന്നു പോയ ആൾക്കാരാണ് അപ്പോൾ നിങ്ങളുടെ മൈൻഡ് സെറ്റ് എന്താണെന്ന് എനിക്കും വ്യക്തമായി അറിയാൻ പറ്റും നമ്മൾ ഓരോ ടൈമും നമ്മൾ പഠിക്കും തോറും നമ്മളുടെ ചാൻസസ് കൂടിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു സിറ്റുവേഷൻ ആണ് അപ്പോൾ ആ ഒരു സിറ്റുവേഷനിലാണ് നിങ്ങളെല്ലാം എന്ന് ഞാൻ വിചാരിക്കുന്നു അപ്പം ഞാനിവിടെ ഇന്നത്തെ ഒരു സെക്ഷനിൽ ഡീൽ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇന്ത്യൻ ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ മാർക്കറ്റും ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റും ആണ് അപ്പം ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റിൽ ഉള്ള ഒന്ന് രണ്ട് മോഡ്യൂൾസ് വളരെ സിമ്പിളാണ് ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ ലിറ്ററേസി അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ അവന്യൂസ് അപ്പോൾ അത് അത് ഞാൻ നോക്കുന്നില്ല എല്ലാ കണ്ടൻസും കൂടി ഞാൻ എനിക്ക് ഈ വൺ ആൻഡ് ഹാഫ് അവേഴ്സിൽ തീർക്കാൻ പറ്റുമോ എന്ന് അറിയത്തില്ല സോ ഐ വിൽ ട്രൈ ഫോർ ദ ലെവൽ ബെസ്റ്റ് എനിക്ക് ഒരു കാര്യം പറയാൻ പറയാനുള്ളത് ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മുടെ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ പേപ്പറിൽ വരുന്ന ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ പാറ്റേണെ പറ്റിയിട്ടാണ് അപ്പോ ഈ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ പേപ്പറില് റിമെമ്പർ കാറ്റഗറി ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ഉണ്ടാവാം അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ലെവൽ ഉണ്ടാവാം സംടൈംസ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ലെവൽ ഉണ്ടാവാം സംടൈംസ് അനാല അനലൈസ് ലെവൽ ഉണ്ടാവാം അനാലിറ്റിക്കൽ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ഉണ്ടാവാം അപ്പോ ഇറ്റ്സ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഡിപ്പെൻഡ്സ് ഓൺ ദ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ പേപ്പർ സെറ്റ് ഓഫ് some question paper sector always uh, means uh, they are uh, like you know uh, asking only remember category questions what is what are explain just remember you can just uh, understand i mean kaanava padiche edan pattuna athathilulla questions aayikka but uh, some question paper sector uh, means it's according to the bloom's taxonomy uh, so it's it should uh, psc thana galpa parannittu undavum difficulty level nokkano no no so uh, some questions may be more than 40 percentage questions coming from understanding level so understanding level questions etratholam perform cheyum ennadine adisthanamakkitta irikkum rank determine cheyana അപ്പോൾ നിങ്ങളുടെ ഈ ആൻസർ ഷീറ്റ് എല്ലാം തന്നെ ഇപ്പോൾ കോടതിയും കേസും ഒക്കെ ഉള്ളത് കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് സോഫ്റ്റ് കോപ്പി പി എസ് സി സൂക്ഷിച്ചു വെക്കും ദെൻ യു ക്യാൻ യു ക്യാൻ അപ്ലൈ ഫോർ ദ സ്ക്രൂട്ട് അണി ആഫ്റ്റർ ദ എക്സാമിനേഷൻ ഡു യു ഹാവ് ഐ മീൻ യു ഹാവ് എനി കോൺഫ്ലിക്ട് ഓഫ് മാർക്സ് ഓക്കെ സോ വാട്ട് ആം ട്രൈങ് ഇസ് സബ്ജെക്ട് നോളജ് കണ്ടൻറ് നോളജ് കോൺസെപ്റ്റ് നോളജ് വ്യക്തമായിട്ടുള്ള ആളിന് മാത്രമേ കൂടുതൽ മാർക്ക് സ്കോർ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റത്തുള്ളൂ ജസ്റ്റ് ഒരു റിമെമ്പർ കാറ്റഗറിയിൽ പഠിക്കുന്ന ആളിന് ദ ആർ നോട്ട് ഏബിൾ ടു പെർഫോം എൻ ദ എക്സാമിനേഷൻ ദാറ്റ്സ് മൈ ഐഡിയോളജി സെയിം ലൈക്ക് സിവിൽ സർവീസ് ഒക്കെ നിങ്ങൾ പ്രിപ്പയർ ചെയ്യുന്ന പോലെ കുറച്ചും കൂടി അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് കോൺസെപ്റ്റ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ആളിന് വ്യക്തമായി മാർക്ക് മേടിക്കാൻ പറ്റും അപ്പോൾ ഓരോ സബ്ജക്റ്റും നിങ്ങൾ ഡീപ്പ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ലെവലിലോട്ട് പോയാൽ മാത്രമേ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ചോദിക്കുന്ന ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസിന് ആൻസർ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റത്തുള്ളൂ ഞാൻ പറയുന്നു അത് പ്രൊവൈഡ് ഡീ പറയുന്ന അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ലെവലിലെ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ചോദിക്കുവാണെങ്കിൽ സോ ഐ ഹോപ്പ് പി എസ് സി ഹാവ് ഗീവൺ ഇൻസ്ട്രക്ഷൻസ് ഫോർ ആസ്കിങ് ഓഫ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ലെവൽ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ആൻഡ് അനാലിറ്റിക്കൽ ആൻഡ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ലെവൽ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ഓക്കെ so i can show you some uh, understanding of questions just uh, before my session uh my screen is visible or not 
it is visible service okay so uh, one question uh, this there is a uh, objective cause outcome identify the trends and patterns of shares and stock market indexes uh, it's coming from the topic is from in, indian financial market how does the stock market trading take place so these kind of questions how does the stock market trading take place so usually nammal book inde content padikkunna aalnu idu answer cheyan buddhimutta irukku then how does the stock price change in the stock exchange how do you invest in the stock market how are stock prices determined how does the stock prices determined so there is a clear cut answer on that so ningal choyki idinellam answer answer key il idinellam proper right answers undo what does uh, each axis of stock chart represent what do words like high open low market so ru uh, stock chart varichittu adinte open high positions ok varikkan pore what is the right time to exit from a stock what is the right time to exit from a stock then what are the assumptions behind valuation of stocks in the stock exchange the price is what you pay and the value is what you get differentiate the price and value of a stock so uh, this type of questions may be asked how do you determine the trend in a stock how do you understand the stock trends so these questions are part of understanding level questions അപ്പൊ ഈ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് പെർഫോം ചെയ്യുന്നതായിരിക്കും നിങ്ങൾ റാങ്ക് ഡിറ്റർമിൻ ചെയ്യണം അല്ല അത് അല്ലാതെ ഈ വോട്ട് ആർ എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ എന്നുള്ള ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസിന് പുറമെ ഇങ്ങനെയുള്ള ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ദീസ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ആർ വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഈ പറയുന്ന എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ വോട്ട് ആർ അതെല്ലാം തന്നെ മെജോറിറ്റി ആൾക്കാർക്കും എഴുതാൻ പറ്റും ഈവൻ ഒരു പ്രിപ്പറേഷനും ഇല്ലാത്ത ആളിന് പോലും ആ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ആൻസർ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും ബട്ട് ഇങ്ങനെയുള്ള ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അതിന് സബ്ജെക്ട് നോളജ് കണ്ടന്റ് നോളജ് ഉള്ള ആളിന് മാത്രമേ ആൻസർ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുള്ളൂ ഹൗ ക്യാൻ എ കമ്പനി ഇൻക്രീസ് ഏർണിംഗ് പെർ ഷെയർ വോട്ട് ആർ ദ റേഷ്യോസ് അപ്ലൈഡ് ഫോർ എസ്റ്റിമേറ്റിംഗ് വർക്ക് ഓഫ് കമ്പനീസ് മാർക്കറ്റ് ക്യാപിറ്റലൈസേഷൻ ഇസ് എ ടോട്ടൽ വാല്യൂ ഓഫ് ദി കമ്പനി എക്സ്പ്ലൈൻ ദ പി റേഷ്യോ ഓഫ് എ കമ്പനി നെവർ ബിക്കംസ് നെഗറ്റീവ് വൈ Uh, i have made a sample questions uh, so this type of questions may be asked just yan oru example aayittu parnadana okay so i can start uh, my presentation <clears throat> എന്റെ പ്രസന്റേഷൻ രണ്ട് പോർഷൻ ആയിട്ടാണ് ഒന്ന് ഞാൻ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെന്റ് മാനേജ്മെന്റ് ഡീൽ ചെയ്യും അതിനകത്ത് മെയിൻലി ബിഹേവിയറൽ ഫൈനാൻസ് ആയിരിക്കും ഡീൽ ചെയ്യുന്ന ഫസ്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ മാർക്കറ്റ് ആൻഡ് സർവീസസ് ഇപ്പോൾ രണ്ട് പാർട്ടായിട്ട് ഡിവൈഡ് ആയിട്ടുണ്ട് രണ്ട് പോർഷന്റെ കണ്ടന്റ് ഞാൻ വളരെ സ്പീഡിൽ നിന്ന് പറയാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് ട്രൈ ചെയ്യും ഐ സ്ക്രീൻ ഈസ് വിസിബിൾ ഓർ നോട്ട് ഓക്കെ Okay. So this is a concept map of Indian financial system. So it's very, this map uh, will be helpful for you to understand Indian financial system. So Indian financial system consists of four elements, four components, financial institutions, financial markets adile financial markets aanu namukku koodudal importance kodukkanda financial market inde financial sirchathine naalayittu divide cheyunu financial institutions undu financial instruments undu financial intermediaries and financial markets then financial market uh, facility long term investing long term capital formation short term borrowing short term lending price determination the price determination is a very important function of financial market if the financial market is not there we cannot identify the price of securities then risk sharing liquidity then indian financial markets include 
uh, Indian capital market and Indian money market. Indian capital market consists of primary market, secondary market and derivative market. All these markets are regulated by Securities Exchange Board of India. And primary market having instruments including equity, debt and preference. Secondary equity market uh, consists of instruments which are equity, preference and debt. The same instruments. And derivative market have two instruments only, futures and options. You know, uh, you understand that that uh, the forwards and swaps are not permitted in the stock exchanges, not it. So only futures and options are uh, permitted to be traded in the derivative market segment. Then uh, Indian money market, Indian money markets uh, operated by business, government, government backed companies, banks, mutual funds, there are instruments such as call money, commercial paper, treasury bills, certificate of deposits, term money. And Indian money market is regulated by RBI and SEBI. The major regulator is Reserve Bank of India. Okay. So this is a concept map. Uh, this map I can explain in detail in the coming slide. Okay. So Indian financial system, Indian financial market, different types of market, primary, secondary, derivative and instruments, money market and uh, the person, uh, institutions operating money market and the instruments of money market and regulators. These are the end, uh, things in the Indian financial system. So the contents, uh, I think uh, uh, you all have uh, some idea about the Indian financial market already. So I can uh, fast at and give one to Introduction to Indian financial system, primary market, financial market, security market, money market, foreign exchange market, commodity derivative market, insurance market, corporate actions, financial statements, time value of money, regulators and regulatory framework. So, introduction to financial system. So, financial system allows transfer of money between savers and borrowers. I will show the diagram of flow of funds. There are direct finance and indirect finance. Direct finance is coming from the lenders and savers to the financial market. And from the financial market, the funds are borrowed by the business firms, government. And this is a direct finance and there is an indirect finance also. Indirect finance is uh, deals through financial intermediaries. So financial intermediaries, we will uh, uh, look financial intermediaries in, de in detail. And direct finance and indirect finance. Direct finance already is a diagram explained. Direct finance directly invested in the capital market or money market. Indirect finance means Indirectly, that means through financial intermediaries, uh, the investors uh, investing their money. So this is a components of financial system. Financial system combines uh, financial institutions, financial market. I, I have already explained in the concept map. Financial institutions, financial market, financial instruments, financial services. And financial institutions covers regulators, intermediaries, non-intermediary and financial markets organized and unorganized market financial market consists of organized uh, market and unorganized market we will look in detail in the later slides financial instruments long term medium term and short term intermediaries also we will discuss and there is a regulator is also very important otherwise uh, without the regulators the financial market is collapsed so the regulator, the SEBI, is, uh, the main regulator SEBI has been called as watchdog in the Indian capital market and money market. Then classification of financial institutions. Uh, there are banking and non-banking financial institutions, term finance institutions, 
specialized financial institutions like Exim Bank, Nabot, term financial institution consists of IDBA and Small Industries Development Bank of India. Then investment institutions like UTI, LIC and General Insurance Corporations. Intermediaries, intermediaries there are credit trading agencies, merchant banks, etc. These are the institutions working in Indian financial system. Then financial market, uh, primary, secondary, we will uh, look details in the later side. Organized and organized and over the counter exchange, you know, there is an OTC. Uh, OTC transactions are uh, in the financial market like forward uh, and swap uh, foreign exchange transactions are uh, done through over the counter mode. So that also parallelly done uh, along with the exchange transactions. So what is a financial instrument? A financial instrument is a claim against a person or an institution for payment at a future date of the sum of money or periodic payment in the form of interest or dividend. It represents charges or debentures or preferentials or bonds. It's a claim against the definition you can look in the books. Uh, I don't want to explain further financial instrument. So these financial instruments are the financial engineering product every day by day in new financial instruments coming up in the financial system. So the investors have to identify the pros and cons of each and every each financial instruments before investment. There is a decline. Uh, I mean, uh, there is a statement in the mutual fund. The mutual funds are subject to market risk. So uh, same like uh, the people should be very conscious uh, about uh, investment in financial instruments. Some financial instruments are very risky. Financial services, uh, I can skip this slide. Some slides I can skip. Major categories of financial service, fund intermediation, payment mechanism, provision of liquidity, risk management, financial engineering, okay. So these are the financial intermediaries, you know, which is very important, financial intermediaries, Financial intermediaries consist of credit rating agencies, uh, merchant banking, portfolio management, depositories, custodials, and issuing guarantees. So this is, these are the financial intermediaries. Uh, these intermediaries uh, have a very important role in the financial system. So they, the, these are the pivotal agencies for the uh, connection of investors and uh, the borrowers uh, in the financial market. The regulators, of course, regular. I already explained there is two regulators in the financial market. SEBI is the main regulator, and also Bank of India is another regulator. So, primary market, uh, a market for fresh capital. Uh, it provides the channels for sales of new securities. Uh, it is the main instruments of primary market consist of shares and debentures. Okay. In money market consist of uh, treasury bills and all, but uh, we individual people are uh, not able to enter into the money market, only institutions are entered into the money market. The different kinds of issues, uh, very important issues, public issue, right issue, bonus issue, and private placements. These are the four categorization of issues and public issue, uh, initial public offer and further public offer. Initial public offer also subclassified into fresh issue offer for sale and further public offer also classified into fresh issue offer for sale. I will explain in detail. Then the private placement, preferential issue and qualified institutional placement. So public issue is very important, IPO and FPO. There is a difference between IPO and FPO. IPO means an unlisted company makes either a fresh issue of securities or an offer for sale of its existing security. So you should be clear that unlisted companies, company makes either uh, a fresh issue of securities 
uh, unlisted there is a uh, problem with there is an just for wait with it there is an announcement uh, my house near is temple So we can continue. Initial public offer. Initial public offer is when an unlisted company makes either a fresh issue. The company is not at listed. List to check out the company issue. Check in the name. initial public offer. No, IPO check the share. So, Anna pinna our stock exchange will list to check in the. But further public offer means already listed company make either issue of securities to the public. The level near the list to check the near the IPO guy new our list to check the. Anna share so our pin name. Uh, Investors and then fund the collective and it is issued in another further public offer in order about initial public offer uh, our current angular uh, uh, private play private price man which here a lingual our uh, public issue here and the world further public offer private place man which here a lingual our it depends on their decision to uh, to give you their shares our uh, private placement or public issue so you uh, you should be able to demarcate uh, IPO and uh, FPO. The simple difference: IPO means unlisted company, uh, FPO means already listed company. Right issue, you know, it's the uh, issue shares to the existing shareholders. Bonus issue, uh, issue of securities, existing shareholders, free of cost, but right issue is not free. Private placement, you know, uh, it's a separate section uh, provision for the private placement, but there is a restriction given by the SEBI, uh, and the person does not exceed 49, and which is neither a right issue or a, nor a public issue. So it is private placement, means just issued it to friends and families, simply. Private placement. Maybe other qualified institutional placement are preferential allotment. Qualified institutional placement are not institutional divide based on their uh, price offer, price offered by them. Then uh, SEBI's regulations. Issue of capital to public by Indian companies are governed by the uh, issue of capital and disclosure requirements. It's very important uh, regulation by the SEBI. So these regulations are the base for the issue of shares, either IPO or FPO, which is based on the SEBI's ICDR regulations 2009. There are uh, detailed regulations you, you can uh, you can study detailed uh, in the books and in the net also it is available. Then pricing in public issues, uh, you know, uh, uh, price, how the price is determined, accountancy, uh, share application, share allotment, share first call, or share second call. That's a problem with the curriculum. So, uh, now we share the issue. Uh, the lead merchant is the person who determines the price of uh, IPO. 
sometimes the company go for the book building process in majority cases book building process is the uh, system in which the company discover the price of a uh, new issue the book building is a main process sometimes the the uh, the lead merchant banker also can uh, uh, determine the price of new issue book building process ningalku ariyam adinathu price band unda price band in agathulla price namakku parayan pattum adinu shesham the the merchant banker the lead merchant banker will determine at what price the company can uh, issue new shares book building is a process of price discovery so you already the guy on a book building process then the role of the lead merchant banker the lead merchant banker is a financial intermediary uh, and plays a very important role in the issue of shares and uh, he only exercises the due diligence and satisfies uh, the disclosure requirement uh, as per the regulations of security section board of india and the company always have a memorandum of understanding with the merchant banker before the issue the company is not involved in the issue the entire things done by the lead merchant banker and he is appointing the underwriters bankers brokers etc so these are the uh, intermediaries involved in the issue process uh, merchant banker registrars bankers to the issue underwriters so you can go detail uh, with the help of books because the lack of time i am uh, skipping the slides so these are the very important persons involved in the issue process this is very important international deposit receipt uh, three international deposit receipt you at least you, you need to learn indian deposit international deposit receipt consists of three deposit receipts adr gdr and idr adr means when a company issues i mean list their shares in an, in an american stock exchange so that uh, with the help of a bank and the, the the shares of indian company if the indian company goes for the adr the indian company uh, need to be listed in the american stock exchange with the help of a bank and they are converting the indian shares corresponding with the american deposit receipts similar case if a company listed in london or luxembourg or frankfurt stock exchanges the instrument is called as gdr gdr is the europe somewhere in the europe they are listed listing recently kerala government in the bond london stock exchange listed that is euro commercial bonds are the shares are shares list cheyumbol aanu avade gdr gdr varunathu american stock exchange listed adr or american company indian stock market il vanu list cheyal avade indian deposit receipts so three international deposit receipts indian deposit receipts american deposit receipts and global deposit receipts so you have to understand or differentiate the three deposit receipts so indian deposit receipts should be listed in the in its home country exchange so these are the foreign capital issuances uh, consist of uh, global deposit receipts american deposit receipts foreign currency convertible bonds external commercial borrowings so gdr adr foreign currency convertible bonds foreign currency convertible bond is a uh, the masala bond is a good example of foreign currency convertible bonds and external commercial banks also used by the companies to get foreign capital from the other countries so gdr gdr already explained you the stock exchange which has been listed in outside the country mainly european stock exchanges so usually typically one gdr is equal to 10 indian shares but any ratio can be used typically we are saying that one gdr is equal to 10 shares then adr i already explain adr also ningale detail aite padichonu then foreign currency convertible bonds the bonds issued by indian companies and subscribed by the non residents Uh, these bonds carry fixed interest 
and these bonds are convertible into certain number of ordinary shares after a specific period of time. Sometimes the conversion power is not there in the foreign currency convertible bonds. So uh, Indian companies uh, always prefer to issue GDR in, uh, rather than foreign currency convertible bonds. Why? Because foreign exchange risk is more in the case of foreign currency convertible bonds because we have to pay interest regularly. So the interest should be given in, uh, through, through dollars. The interest money can be given in the form of dollars. So dollars are subject to ex exchange risk. So the companies are careful uh, when, uh, when the issue of uh, foreign currency convertible bonds. But they are likely to issue GDR uh, rather than foreign currency convertible bonds. Then external commercial borrowings, uh, so commercial loans, foreign currency loans, different uh, types, it's, it contains different types, external assistance, buyer's credit, supplier's credit, NRI deposit, so you can study detail. So sometimes the question may be asked, functions of financial market, what are the functions of financial market? You can write borrowings and lending is a main function, borrowing and lending. Price determination is another prominent function of Indian financial market. Information aggregation and coordination also another function. Risk sharing, liquidity, efficiency. These are the functions of Indian financial market. Indian financial market and product, there are four markets. Security market, money market, foreign exchange market, and commodity market. Security market, you uh, should be careful in this area. Security market, cash market, you always call it cash market. Cash market means the market, uh, the spot settlement. The stock market, Indian stock market is a cash market. We say it is cash market, but some people are confused with when people saying the cash market. The stock market is a cash market, but derivative market is not cash market. The stock market is always co also called as cash market or equity market. It consists of shares and debentures. Then derivatives, uh, index and stocks. Both are trading in derivatives. Uh, options also, index option and stock option. Features also, index features and stock features. And debt market is very important in India. Government securities and corporate bonds. And there is a collective investment vehicles which consists of uh, mutual funds, index funds, and exchange traded funds. These three are very important. Nowadays, uh, many people are investing in mutual funds, index funds, and exchange traded funds. There's some people are very interested to in invest in gold ETFs. Some people are very interested to invest in uh, nifty ETFs, and exchange traded funds. So these are the uh, security market structure. Money market, you know, uh, the market which is less than one year, short-term debt financing and investment. And there is a foreign exchange market. The foreign exchange market is largest in the world. Very, very wide, big foreign exchange market in India. And commodity market, which consists of uh, agricultural commodities and non-agricultural commodities. There are many commodity market in India as well as in the world. Chicago Mercantile Exchange, Tokyo Commodity Exchange are the world's most popular commodity markets. Then insurance market, uh, which consists of life and non-life insurance market, which has been part of uh, Indian financial market. Securities market in India, which consists of shares, debentures, stocks, functions of security market. It's also very important. What are the functions of security market? Mobilization of savings and acceleration of capital formation, promotion of industrial growth, rising long-term capital, ready and continuous market, proper channelization of funds, provision of variety of services. So primary market already explained, secondary market. You know, the settlement cycle, I mean, settlement period, you definitely need to understand. For the stock, the settlement time is T plus two, and derivatives, it is T plus 1. 
and foreign exchange it is T plus 2 but uh, foreign exchange for pairs like dollar and Canadian dollar is T plus 1 except uh, all others are T plus 2. So T plus 1 for derivatives, T plus 2 for uh, uh, cash market means stock market and uh, T plus 2 for foreign exchange but the pair of uh, dollar and Canadian dollar uh, it's T plus 1. T means trade day plus one day. Then market participants, uh, investors, issuers, intermediaries, and regulators. Uh, these are the market participants. Uh, so I can skip this slide. Then components of securities market, shares, equity shares, uh, right shares, because practically chain the carrying a matra in a editolu, illata carrying on the in some textbook, it's uh, some uh, chela text is not happening in India. Uh, so all the variables matra namlu padi karigum best. Equity shares, right issue, right shares, bonus shares, preference shares, cumulative preference shares, cumulative convertible preference shares. Then convertible debentures, non-convertible debentures. When you look in the exchange, identify you cannot see that uh, the preference shares. Preferentials in down on the preferentials are a special at allow to in the honor. Preferentials, preferentials are subscribed and angle minimum 20 to 25 lakhs. So institutions are mainly preferentials subscribe in the individuals preferentials in uh, allotment. Issue by the companies, but as per the provisions of security section board of India. Preferentials, but normal theoretically, preferentials. Particular under preferentials, they have preferential right to repayment of capital at the time of winding up, and uh, they have the preferential right to get the dividend. So, uh, but uh, in practical, the preferentials are very less in the stock market, uh, secondary market, as well as primary market. But preferentials are there, but the people uh, need to invest more. Minimum 20 to 25 lakhs should be invested for getting the preferential allotment. Derivative market detail at the next section. Debt market is important. Uh, uh, debt market is the fulcrum of modern financial system. This sentence is very important. Very, impo very debt market is uh, happen in India. Uh, plays very important role in the efficient mobilization, uh, liquidity management. Monetary policy, government in the policy, sell and then a debt market in a uh, favorable on the reveal and government chain. So there are collective investment vehicles already I explained mutual funds, exchange traded funds, and index funds. So mutual funds, you know, uh, mutual funds, there are investors, they uh, send their money and there is a fund manager collect their funds, and these fund manager invest in securities and gen returns the returns is backed to the investors again this is a cycle uh, so the mutual fund is very important for the person who don't know how to invest in the stock market we simply we can depend on the mutual funds by putting investment in the funds and they will do uh, professional investment and uh, provide better returns So there are advantages of mutual funds you can read in the books. Uh, index funds, index is also very important. Now people uh, don't believe uh, single stocks. So people believe in exchange, you know, Sensex and Nifty performance in recent time. Uh, it's 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 very tremendous growth uh, uh, growth of, uh, by comparing the other uh, stock exchanges in the other part of the world. Uh, why this is uh, the country's GDP is uh, in a negative trend, but the stock market is uh, increasing upward movement. So very, very surprising thing that Indian stock market is going up as compared to other countries. So I don't know the, what are the factors which influence the stock market uh, for the increase of uh, this kind of way, but still the GDP is in a negative trend. But there is a hope on the investors that the Indian stock market is going up. So the people are interested to invest in the stock market. So, uh, so the index is a very good, uh, very good thing we can invest because based on the index, index, index is very, very nifty. Index is very strong. Census is very strong. So, uh, index is always increasing so that the people uh, gain, gaining uh, with the help with their investment in the index. I mean, index, little index, or 
റിസ്ക് ഉണ്ട് സ്റ്റോക്കിന്റെ പെർഫോമൻസ് വൊളാറ്റൈൽ ആണ് നമുക്ക് പറയാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ല സ്റ്റോക്ക് എപ്പ കൂടും എപ്പ കുറേ എന്ന് പറയാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ല സോ വെരി സേഫ് ടു ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ദ ഇൻഡെക്സ് ടു സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇൻഡെക്സ് ഫണ്ട് ഈസ് വെരി റെലവെന്റ് നോ വറീസ് ദൻ എക്സ്ചേഞ്ച് ട്രേഡഡ് ഫണ്ട് എക്സ്ചേഞ്ച് ട്രേഡഡ് ഫണ്ട്സ് മീൻസ് അഗെയിൻ ഇറ്റ്സ് there is a difference between exchange traded fund and mutual funds very important is the difference is very important exchange traded funds are bought and sold throughout the day so you can get any price uh, when the market is open uh, 9:15 and the closing at 9:30 so you can get a price uh, from the morning till evening any price you can get based on the spot price but the mutual funds are bought and sold based on the price at day end that is a major difference balance all remains the same so mutual funds il thanne index funds und but adinde oru divasthe end price lana adu trade cheynathu but exchange traded funds anengil same like shares shares pole oro time ilum demand and supply factors ansarichu adinde price maarikondirikkum means we are trading with the exchange nifty 50 anengil nifty bank ix then in sense we can trade any exchange uh by investing in the exchange traded funds gold also you can invest uh, gold exchange traded fund is that so 2007 it was started gold bees gold in the rate and search adinde idu kudikondirikku so you can buy now gold uh, gold uh, exchange uh, traded fund in the google pay from the google pay so there are some market uh, indicators stock market indicators uh, sometimes the question may be asked what are the stock market indicators uh market capitalization market capitalization how uh, do you calculate the market capitalization it's a share price into number of uh, outstanding shares and uh, turnover uh, computed by multiplying the traded quantity with the traded price means the daily turnover we can calculate the traded quantity of shares multiplied by the traded price we will get the turnover turnover ratio also we can calculate somebody asking for the my ppt so i will i will uh, i will uh, decide and consult um, with my dipa before uh, sharing the ppt uh, turnover ratio liquidity of the market can be go, uh, gauged by turnover ratio which equals the total turnover on a country stock exchange divided by the stock market capitalization so turnover ratio also we can calculate your total turnover on a country stock exchange means rajyathulla stock exchange ulla mottham turnover turnover angane calculate cheyanam nam parayittund total trade quantity multiplied by the trade price uh, total turnover on a country stock exchange divided by the stock market capitalization then market capitalization ratio is dividing the market capitalization with the gdp of the country very important indicator market capitalization ratio so uh, there is a stock market is always related with the gd gdp but now it's uh, going in the opposite uh, opposite side uh, uh, gdp is uh, going downward and the market is going upward so you can identify the factors is very important the first time in the country uh, first time in the country is going in the negative direction opposite direction then traded value ratio Uh, divide, dividing traded value divided by turnover by gdp of the country then index moments uh, movements uh, very important uh, good stock market index captures the behavior of overall equity market the index is the uh, index is the behavior of uh, overall stock market performance when the index is going downward the market performance is weak when the index is going upward the stock stocks are performing better so uh, uh, should represent the market should should be well diversified and at highly liquid so these are the characteristics of uh, indian stock market index another demutualization is very important uh, everyone should know demutualization so now the market is demutualized demutualized means the trading members are separated from the management of stock exchanges pand stock exchange la management nagath board of directors nagath trading members undayirunu ipo trading members ne management inna 
separate edu management ile trading members illa trading members means the brokers geojit pnb paribas sherkan capstock sba caps these are they are the trading members they are being separated from the management of stock exchanges so this very important uh, decision of uh, government of india and sebi so after that the stock market uh reacted well and the stock market went up after the decision of uh, demutualization and the screen based trading is happening in india now the trading is fully automated screen based settlement cycle al already explained pandit t plus 5 are now t plus 2 derivative t plus 1 and risk management is very important uh, risk management is very important sebi is the regulator for managing the risk uh, 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 if the company Uh, failed to uh, maintain their momentum they can be uh, removed from the index removed from the stock exchange there are regulations uh, by the sebi for to be included in the stock exchanges for trading purpose then investors protection uh, and there is a pan is also compulsory as a regulation of uh, uh, regulatory reforms done by the sebi so if you have to enter in the stock market permanent account number is a, a must so money market uh, money market uh, organized and unorganized indian money market is organized as well as unorganized but indian capital market is fully organized unorganized on the capital market illa but money market is still unorganized and there are presence of indigenous bankers money lenders non banking financial intermediaries so that many kind of scams present in indian money market rather than indian capital market so sebi is a watchdog in indian capital market but sebi is not a watchdog in indian money market so that there is a, there are a lot of scandals uh, you might have heard about the west bengal uh, chit funds corruption or everything which was happened in the money market not in the capital market the players in the money market is very important uh, these are the players in the money market public sector undertakings rbi mutual funds discount and finance house banks corporate investors non banking financial companies state government provident funds uh, these are the players of money market uh, players are more in indian money market because there are uh, uh, there are uh, relaxation over the licensing uh, and the regulation regulation part but in capital market namukku adinathu kerana angil thanne licensing listing requirements a lot of regulations and we need to pay a lot of things uh to get the license uh to enter into the capital market but the money market is uh, somewhat relaxed so that uh, these kind of uh, players even licensed and non licensed the players are involved in the money market so ro role of rbi in the money market rbi plays very important role in the money market because it deals with the money so uh, the money market instruments uh, you can learn the details with the help of books call money market call money market uh, the land for a day or the rest ke vaippa kodukka for a week or a 14 days maximum 14 days on a call money market you know there is a you might have heard about a bank uh ee shivakumar requesting to not it to share content uh money market instruments uh call money market is a very very liquid instrument in the call money market you might have heard about a bank called s bank they have played in call money market uh, so after that there is a huge amount of loss incurred by the bank and after that the bank has collapsed uh, so uh, it's very very liquid uh, instrument call money market one day two days three days uh, till uh, 14 days uh, we will get a credit but the interest rate is depends on the uh, negotiation between the agencies so sometimes the sbi uh, uh, needs finance sbi can take finance from the icic bank but the interest rate is uh, depends on the negotiation between the banks because it's very liquid one for one day or two day they are uh, lending money the term uh, money market instruments term money market instruments which is more than 14 days to one year uh, and their base uh, rate is mumbai interbank offer rate the MA, mibar rate is their mibar rate is a base for the Uh, fixing of interest rate in the term money market term money market 14 days to 1 year the interest rate is depends on the mibar rate mibar rate is always fluctuating the repo market repo market is also very important in the money market repo means uh, repurchase of securities if a particular uh, 
institution wanting a finance and they can sell their securities to an individual or an institution and after a period of time they can purchase back and the difference between the forward price also determined e the price in tirichu purchase yenu nerathe thirumaan vechak so adana repo market repo market is very important in the money market then collateralized borrowing and lending obligations is also approved by the RBI treasury bills treasury bills is issued by the government uh, and it is uh, it is been recognized by the reserve bank of india uh, and it is uh, been issued to bridge the temporary gap between revenue and capital and its maturity period of 3 months 6 months and 12 months and the certificate of deposit is issued by the commercial bank and it is payable at uh, it's issued at a discount and redeemed at uh, maturity mean par issued at a discount and redeemed at par it deposit ranging from 3 months to 1 year the derivatives i can discuss in the next session foreign exchange market is a, kind of the world's largest foreign exchange market uh, and the, the base currency is called first currency and the second currency is called term currency is very important and is the largest and most liquid financial market in the world then participate participants in foreign exchange market uh, there are uh, non banking companies commercial banks central banks exchange brokers speculators all other participants in foreign exchange market then foreign exchange uh, trading settlement i already explained t plus 2 but the exception is the us dollar and canadian dollar the currency pair which settles t plus 1 very important then for next in derivatives we can look on the derivative section commodity derivative market is very important commodity derivative market non agricultural and agricultural commodities uh, you can learn more uh, from the books non agricultural what are non agricultural commodities traded in the derivative market and agricultural commodities traded in the derivative market and commodity derivatives and financial derivatives uh, commodity derivatives you know it is physical settlement uh, the financial derivatives is cash settlement so we can look in the derivative section insurance market is there life and general insurance these are the insurance intermediaries corporate options are very important corporate actions uh, corporate actions you know whenever there is a corporate action an impact will be happened in the market either increase in the share price or decrease in the share price uh so there are a lot of corporate actions in the market so these are the corporate action dividend is a main corporate action after the dividend declaration the company share price may go up usually then stock split means existing shares of face value divided into smaller denomination the 10 face value divided into 5 or 2 or 1 buy back sometimes the company buy back existing shares uh, and right to issue bonus issue these are the five five uh, elements i mean the f- five corporate actions are present in the market so these corporate actions are very important uh, weapon by the companies to increase or decrease the share prices financial statements balance sheet profit and loss account uh, is a very important okay these are regulators so you should understand the regulators the rbi forward market commission irda and pension fund regulatory development authority sebi is the <coughs> regulator for uh, bond market equity and derivative market rbi is also part of uh, bond market equity derivative banking and fixed income market forward market commission is a regulator for commodity market irdi insurance regulatory development authority of india is a regulator for insurance pfrdi is a regulator for pension funds okay so uh, sebi's roles you can uh, read from the books uh, so this is the first was over and uh, remaining i can have uh, 30 40 minutes so
ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ മാർക്കറ്റ് അത്രേ ഉള്ളൂ അത്രയും കാര്യങ്ങൾ ഡീറ്റെയിൽ ആയിട്ട് പഠിക്കുക ഞാൻ അതിനകത്ത് വിട്ടുപോയത് ഫണ്ട് ബേസ്ഡ് ആൻഡ് ഫീസ് ബേസ്ഡ് സർവീസസ് ദാറ്റ് ഓൾസോ ഇൻ ദ സിലബസ് സോ യു ക്യാൻ ലേൺ ദ ഫണ്ട് ബേസ്ഡ് ആൻഡ് ഫീസ് ബേസ്ഡ് സർവീസസ് വാട്ട് ആർ ദ ഫണ്ട് ബേസ്ഡ് സർവീസസ് ആൻഡ് വാട്ട് ആർ ദ ഫീ ബേസ്ഡ് സർവീസസ് എക്സെപ്റ്റ് ഓൾ ഓഫ് ദ മാറ്റേഴ്സ് ഐ ഹാവ് കവേഡ് ഇൻ ദ മൈ സ്ലൈഡ്സ് സോ യു ക്യാൻ ഡെവലപ്പ് ഫർദർ ദെൻ ബിഹേവിയറൽ ഫൈനാൻസ് ബിഹേവിയറൽ ഫൈനാൻസ് ഇസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെന്റ് മാനേജ്മെന്റ് ഇൻ ദ സിലബസ് സോ ദ മെജോറിറ്റി പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെന്റ് മാനേജ്മെന്റ് കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് ദ ബിഹേവിയറൽ ഫൈനാൻസ് പോർഷൻസ് So, behavioral finance is a study of the influence of the behavior of investors or financial analyst. So, this is the influence of behavior of investors and financial analyst. This is a new area, emerging, emerging area, but a very important area. It countered it against investors. the standard financial theory so called standard financial theory such as capital asset pricing model efficient market hypothesis uh arbitrage model single index model multi index model all these models are uh, uh, i mean the behavioral finance models challenging the all these uh, standard financial models and behavioral financial experts saying that all these models are uh, not practical or sometimes these models may not work out in a real scenario so so that is the very important of uh, importance of behavioral finance uh, the influence of behavior of investors and there is a study by michel badli personality moods emotions play a crucial role in our everyday decision making ningal exam ezhudunna samayath ningala mood valare important aayirikkum ningal athrathola mark score cheyanalad so you have to create a better mood uh, while writing in the examinations so the emotions are very important otherwise your handwriting will be uh, it's not good when you you are in bad mood so you you have to create a better mood while writing in the examination so it focus on the fact that investors are not always rational have limits to their uh, self control and are influenced by their own biases there are people people having biases or people are addicted to biases we cannot control the biases in every time so there is no all uh, rationality uh, or we are we really rational uh, are we really rational 24 manikur nammal rational aano no nobody is uh, rational in 24 hours or 365 days in uh, in an year so there are some irrationality coming into account in always while we behave with the people or when we do investment but behavioral finance capturing the effect of irrationality while investment that will disturb the market that irrationality will lead for the disturbance of the market destroying the market sometimes so that is a rationality so we are not rational always that is the, that is been evidence from the studies the behavior means emotions personality psychology sociology these are the behavior and finance numbers equation statistics and balance sheet these are static but the behavior is not static so standard economics and finance market are perfect the standard theory says that the market are perfect uh, and the, the investors are rational and the investors can assign probability and based on the probability they can predict in the future but uh, there is a question will these decisions reach due to reality will these decisions reach due to reality uh, what what will be the answer you can say that uh, you can find a find the life partner how will you take a partner can we able to predict the behavior of that person so you can you can apply in the real life so financial theories are the theories able to predict the human behavior or able to count the people behavior are the theories are able to predict the human behavior it's not possible human behavior is is very very flexible uh, we cannot predict the theories cannot predict the human behavior that is an importance of behavioral finance so this is the outline of my presentation what is behavioral finance what is the need of behavioral finance how do people make decisions under uncertainty what are the different biases how can understanding of behavioral finance help people make better decisions what is the impact of these biases on financial decision making processes these are the questions uh, some other questions also may ask in the examination so we can look in the later slides so nudging is also part of behavioral finance 
three behavioral theories are there expected utility prospect and nudging uh, the nudging is very very latest theory in the behavioral finance so you can you can expect questions from nudging so behavioral finance is a combination of finance and psychology we have to mix up the finance and psychology for better decision making so there is a quote by Dr. Mayer State, State Man, Santa Clara University. People in standard finance are rational, but the people in behavioral finance are normal. The, all the theories set in the standard finance uh, are based on the assumption that the people are rational or people are economicus, homo economicus, that means rational. Uh, but in reality, people are not rational always. The people, we can say that the people are normal. So behavioral finance filling the gap uh, in standard finance theory says that the people are homo economicus and they are not homo sapiens. So the term homo economicus or economic man is the portrayal of humans as agents who are consistently rational, but it is not uh, practical in all ways. So behavioral finance is filling the gap when which was emerged with the standard finance and normal human beings. So normal people are uh, human um, homo sapiens, not homo economics, uh, econo economicus. That is a uh, says by the uh, behavioral finance. But the standard finance theory, the people are homo economicus. So there is a conflict between the standard financial theoreticians and behavioral finance theoreticians. So uh, efficient market hypothesis is a very important theory. Some people, uh, some technical analysts and some fundamental analysts is uh, quoting this theory as a foolish theory of, of capital market. Uh, his theory was contributed by Eugene Farmer. He got the Nobel Prize for the uh, creation of this model. Efficient market hypothesis, a market which prices always fully reflect available information is called efficient. So, uh, 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 but in practical, we cannot identify a market in which, uh, which reflect uh, fully available information anywhere in the world. Uh, the market is not efficient. So we can say that the market is not efficient. But the pharma says that the market are efficient. An efficient market, uh, uh, the creation of pharma so that uh, the the fundamental analyst and the technical analyst, they won't believe in this theory. If they believe in the theory, the theory will be true. They, do, they, do, they don't have a job in the market. So the, the efficient market hypothesis is criticizing the, the fundamental analysis and the technical analysis. These two analyses are wrong. That the way efficient market hypothesis has pointed out. So the pharma. Uh, there are a lot of anomalies. And these anomalies are the pivotal point of behavioral finance. Uh, and the pharma divided in the market into three categories, weak form, semi-strong form, uh, and uh, strong form. Weak form, semi-strong form, and the strong form. Uh, but uh, almost he succeeded about uh, evidencing the strong, semi-strong form and weak form. There are market the US, for example, the US market. Sometimes it is strong form. It is the hypothesis may be true and the weak form. The hypothesis may be true, uh, but uh, strong form. Unfortunately, he was failed to prove a strong form of a hypothesis in his model. So criticisms of efficient market hypothesis. Uh, So, Lakshmi, uh, any problem? Yes, Somebody asking, uh, requesting to annotate the shared content. Uh, no, sir. No, nothing, sir. I decline. Criticisms of efficient market hypothesis. Uh, these are the anomalies. Uh, criticisms. Uh, all investors are rational. I, I, I different. Uh, I already pointed out the investors are not rational. Stock price movements are random. Uh, uh, this is another uh, assumption of efficient market hypothesis. Stock price uh, do not follow a pattern. The stock price are random, but it is also uh, not a proved. Stock price are not random and 
definitely it follows a trend. So all investor, investors are well informed. You know, many people, a person who, uh, who get a pan and can enter into market and trade, and he may not know the, uh, the things in the market and information in the market, he simply trade. So this assumption is also foolish. Investors are well informed. I think the 90% of the investors are not fully informed and the 10% maybe we can say that uh, they are informed. Then the market anomalies. Uh, uh, these anomalies of uh, efficient market hypothesis uh, I already said that the efficient market hypothesis uh, criticize uh, fundamental and technical analysis, but uh, they said that the fundamental analysis are wrong. We cannot make a profit out of fundamental analysis and we cannot make, uh, uh, make a profit out of technical analysis. So that's the way the, te uh, the efficient market hypothesis uh, saying, but uh, this, is, uh, this is not possible. We can do profit out of the fundamental analysis. We can identify the intrinsic value of the shares and we can compare the intrinsic value with the market value and uh, we can understand the, whether the stock is overpriced or underpriced and we can make a decision out of that. So uh, fundamental analysis is another anomaly. Technical anomalies, the, the, the efficient market hypothesis says that the market uh, did not follow any kind of trend is an, another another foolishness. The market, some shares, uh, majority shares following a trend. So uh, is another anomaly. And seasonal anomalies, you know, one one day one day effect, two days effect, the market may be crash. So uh, these anomalies not rectified in the efficient market hypothesis. Uh, they are called as calendar anomalies, calendar effect. Uh, okay. So these are the uh, crises which cannot be predicted by the uh, standard finance theoreticians. Global financial crisis 2007, Corona effect 2020, the market were crashed uh, after these events. So uh, there are new uh, you know, event studies. So before the event and after the event, what is impact of uh, stock prices? So, uh, there are researchers uh, emerged uh, based on even studies. Then they are the contributors. These are the contributors: uh, Daniel Kahneman, Amos Tversky, uh, Dan Early, Shafin, Werner D. Bondet, Robert J. Schiller, and Richard Thaler. And these are the Nobel laureates uh, of uh, behavioral finance: Richard Thaler, Schiller, Daniel Kahneman, and Smith. Uh, they have contributed more in the behavioral finance. They have Nobel Prize uh, 2002, 2013, and 2017. So Daniel Kahneman is the father of behavioral finance. He's known as the father of behavioral finance. Uh, uh, and uh, he studied uh, the rationality in economics, uh, specialized in cognitive biases and heuristics, uh, way of problem solving, which causes individuals to engage in behavior, which is both rational and anticipated. So that is a study of Kahneman. He was known as the father of behavioral finance. And Richard Thaler is another uh, eminent person in behavioral finance who contributed the nudge theory and his book is called The Nudge. Uh, and uh, uh, he contributed the concepts of mental accounting uh, and he combined the psychology and finance. 2017, he got Nobel Prize. And Shafrin, uh, and Shafrin's contribution is heuristic driven bias. Heuristics is the, the trial and error method. When suppose you are writing the PSC examination, some questions you are not able to uh, perform well, you understand that that time your uh, mental process work and uh, you will do find a solution and how to answer those questions which are uh, very well known uh, to you that time. So that that trial and error method sometimes may lead for uh, errors and sometimes uh, you may be advantage. Uh, advantage. This is called heuristic driven bias. Uh, and this heuristics uh, sometimes causes the market uh, issues. The market may be 
downward because of this heuristic driven biases. And he contributed inefficient market. He contributed a hypothesis called deficient market hypothesis. A deficient market hypothesis. There are there are activities such as cornering, rigging, uh, and these things are very common in the market. Even though the SEBI uh, is been there, but some people are manipulate the price of the stocks in sometimes which cannot be identified by the SEBI. And due to these activities, the people may be. Uh, uh, suffer losses. So that's a study of suffering. And Robert J. Schiller, Schiller who got Nobel Prize for the contributions of behavioral finance and his contribution is asset pricing and he got Nobel Prize 2013. Uh, and he said that investors are human beings process information using shortcuts and emotional filters. So there's two types of behavioral finance, micro behavioral finance and macro behavioral finance. Micro means it examined the behavioral biases, therefore, uh, uh, irrational behaviors of individual investors. It examined the behavioral biases of, therefore, irrational behavior of individual investors. So micro behavioral finance concentrating in individual investors, not the market. So this is micro behavioral finance, and this is called the homo economics, uh, the micro behavioral finance challenging the homo economics version of standard financial theory. This is macro behavioral finance. Macro behavioral finance concentrating. Uh, uh, I will explain the nudge. Somebody asking what is nudge theory. I will explain the nudge. Macro behavioral finance uh, uh, is deals with the entire market, but micro deals with individual individuals biases. But the macro means the biases of the market. So there are behavioral influences like market anomalies, bubbles the volatility which will be high as compared to the previous day what is the reason for the such volatility which behavior causes more volatility uh, limited arbitrage etc macro behavioral finance then there is a question uses and application of behavioral finance sometimes asked uh, the behavioral finance is used for capital budgeting and investment decisions so you have studied the capital budgeting techniques like uh, internal rate of return, profitability index, uh, or benefit cost ratio, a net present value method. But we are not looking on that theories. We are looking on the, the person who deciding, who, who, who using that models, the heuristics of the managers who are using that models for decision making. Sometimes their bias may be affect uh, their, the effect of the models. So, uh, so we have to consider the bias of the managers who are taking decisions uh, by using the standard financial theories. So that is that is a very interesting study. Uh, then dividend policy and decisions, whether the dividend policy is, bi is a biased decision or non-biased decision, and asset allocation and trading. So whether we need to participate in the pension plan or not to participate in the pension plan. Uh, or how much to contribute, uh, where to allocate asset, how to rebalance allocation. These uh, these things can be done with the help of uh, very careful investment. Without means we need to look on these uh, using the rationality. The three theories. Uh, first one is expected utility theory. I will explain in detail. Expected utility theory means. Uh, uh, it posits that investors make the decision under uncertainty which maximizes their expected utility. People de deciding uh, based on their what utility uh, they will get. So there are many uh, risk ca categorization of investors, you know, risk seekers, risk covers investors, and uh, uh, there are risk neutral investors. The utility preference is also different in accordance with the risk perception. So uh, investors making decisions based on the utility level. The prospect theory is, uh, is a follower of an expected utility theory. So prospect theory means the investors uh, perceive more uh, gains rather than uh, they don't want to take risk. So they will uh, try to avoid the risk, uh, but uh, they are interested to get gains only. So uh, expected utility theory, importance to the utility, and the prospect theory means future gains, importance to the future gains. Uh, so expected utility means expected utility it was contributed by uh, Daniel Bernoulli uh, in 18th century. Uh, 
So uh, there is an application of expectability theory. Just I will I will uh, I will give a brief summary of this slide. Uh, uh, insurance market. Insurance, uh, you know, actuaries are there. These actuaries are the people who who decide uh, the the premium uh, premium of insurance policies. So uh, when we invest in insurance market insurance policies, before that we have to consider the premium. So the premium and the claim uh, given by the insurance company are the utilities to the investors. Whether the premium is high, the people are not able to invest in the insurance. So the actuaries are very, very careful about fixing of premiums. So the utility is very important. Insurance policy uh, subscription depends on the, uh, depends on the uh, utility, utility of the insured. So that utility should be considered by the actuaries, otherwise the company's insurance fault will not be sold. So I can skip this slide. There are some mathematics. Then prospect theory. Uh, prospect theory, you know, is, is also called low aversion theory. Uh, it was contributed by uh, Kahneman and Tversky in 1979. The theory is in contrast of expected utility theory. Expected utility giving emphasis on the utility, but here uh, individuals make decisions based on the perceived gains instead of perceived loss. So always giving preference to the gains in the future. So there are some mathematics uh, means uh, when there is a loss in the future, there is a perception of loss, they won't consider it. That's uh, the slide uh, giving. So. Uh, the loss aversion is a very important uh, concept uh, of prospect theory. Loss aversion means uh, a tendency where investors are fear fearful of losses and try to avoid them. Uh, for example, it is better not to lose 1,000 than it gains 1 lakh. So there are the people's behavior is that uh, they don't want to lose uh, 1,000. Uh, even though they will get a gain of uh, 1 lakh uh, or 10,000 uh, in future. They don't, they don't want to lose 1,000. So that's their stand. Majority people thinking like that. So that is a loss aversion bias. So the prospect theory based on this bias, loss aversion. So that there are, uh, uh, the market is living, the market is operating with, uh, by using these loss aversion strategies. People use hedging, people use... Uh, bonds, uh, people uh, purchase insurance product for uh, avoiding these kind of fears. So fear of loss aversion. So loss aversion is another market opportunity for the, uh, for the market, financial engineers. So Nargis, uh, Nargis is a very, very important theory in behavioral finance. Uh, Nargis, uh, uh, you know, Nargis means intervention by the people but these interventions uh, we can have freedom to take these interventions or we can avoid those interventions suppose uh, i can say that uh, if someone someone asks you which brand comes to your mind when you want to eat healthy and fresh food so some some people may prefer it's, it's an american example subway restaurants and uh, uh, whenever you want to meet someone for business but not in office which coffee house comes to your mind? Sister, and business meetings are not done. Cafe coffee day, which is not done. So, business meetings, knowledge, you some people will think of cafe coffee day. That is a nudge. So, whenever it is very hot, you feel like uh, drinking something, you you reminded of cold drinks. So, these nudges uh, are, uh, you can take the freedom of choice. Uh, freedom, nobody compelled you to take nudges, uh, but uh, it's up to you to take or not. Some nudges are uh, positively influenced, some nudges are uh, negatively, uh, some nudges uh, leads negative outcomes. So Richard Thaler got Nobel Prize uh, for the nudges, nudge theory in 2017. I will, I, will, uh, I will show you some very important pictures of nudges, then you will understand more. This is another theory that is hyperbolic discounting uh, is very important. Hyperbolic discounting is given by psychologist Richard uh, Hernstein. Uh, the tendency of individuals to choose smaller soon rewards rather than longer later rewards. You might have heard about 
Uh, a bird in the hand is better than two birds in the bush. So there is a uh, dividend model is there, Walters. So similarly, the people uh, will prefer the, the immediate rewards rather than the longer uh, later rewards. So this is called hyperbolic discounting. So the people prefer immediate rewards rather than later rewards. So their decisions, their financial and investment decisions based on these type of uh, theories, hyperbolic discounting. And there is a standard finance and behavioral finance differences there. You can look, look on the books, it's, everything is, it is available in the Google. Uh, and the type of investors, there are many type of investors. You can get it, uh, this information also, you can get it from the books. Confident investors, anxious investors. Uh, it's based on the category or characteristics of the people. The investors in the market can be divided into different categories. Confident and anxious investors, deliberate and impetuous investors, uh, organized and sloppy investors, rebellious and conventional investors, different types of investors. So this topic is very important. Biases uh, in the investment process, uh, there are two types of biases, cognitive biases and emotional biases. The picture the clearly says that the cognitive biases and emotional bias, one biases which emerges from the cognitive domain of you and other bias will emerge from the emotions. So the difference between cognitive bias and emotional bias, cognitive biases generally involve decision making based on established concepts that may or may not be accurate. So you have had a concept conceptualization in your mind. So that conce conceptualization will uh, lead for decision making. So sometimes your conceptualization may be wrong. Sometimes your conceptualization may be right. So uh, this is cognitive biases. Then emotional bias means uh, means uh, based on our emotions, personal feelings, some kind of decisions which is derived uh, from the emotions. For example, uh, divorces, divorces, the reason for divorces which emerge from the emotions. There is no conceptualization on that. So there are some something which is emerged from the emotions and something which is emerged from the cognitive. The cognitive reasons and the uh, conceptual reasoning. These are the difference between cognitive bias and emotions. Cognitive bias based on the conceptual reasoning and emotional bias is based on the, uh, based on the emotions. The cognitive biases, uh, again skip this slide, uh, type of cognitive biases. The first one is confirmation biases. Uh, confirmation biases means uh, just confirms one's own ideas and ignoring the information that opposes them. So there are some people, they are strongly believe their ideology. They won't believe the other people even though that is right. So, for example, an investor who is holding Reliance Industries share, sure, welcoming all positive news about Reliance Industries, but he may neglect all negative news about Reliance Industries shares. Sure. I know people, I know traders, they always like for some shares. They are marrying a particular stock. They, they love a particular stock. Uh, it's better than their wife. So, uh, uh, that is the confirmation bias. They won't accept any negative news of that company. Even though the company is in a trouble, they won't, uh, they won't try to sell that chance. And uh, uh, self-serving biases, uh, the tendency of the people to attribute the positive outcomes as skills and negative outcomes are bad luck. The tendency of the people to attribute the positive outcomes as skills and negative outcomes are bad luck. So you, uh, you crack an examination, competitive examination, say that you are my skill, but sometimes you may fail in one examination, you said that uh, the questions were so tough or there is a manipulation in the examination, that kind of way you may say that. So that is self-serving biases. Uh, uh, in a stock market example, we can say that uh, increase of return is due to investment skills and some, there is a loss, he assumes that due to bad luck. So this is self-serving biases. And this is a herd mentality is uh, imitation. Uh, there are people who imitate the other, other investors. So there is a person in the picture called Rakesh Sunjinwala. 
So Rakesh Junjunwala purchased some shares uh, soon after his purchase. Some person, some investors uh, across the country purchased the same shares. Okay, so this is uh, this is here herd mentality. This is very very dangerous bias. Sometimes Rajesh Junjunwala, uh, uh, you know, sometimes he he may get some kind of incentive from the company for purchasing a shares. That is an inside deal. And after that, uh, the people, uh, people, you know, people uh, purchase shares without knowing this. So soon after, all people purchase shares and the prices go up. And after that time, the 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 Rajesh Injunwala will sell the shares and uh, uh, book the profit. This is a herd mentality. I won't, I don't I don't want to criticize Rajesh Injunwala. There are some people. Uh, you know, some even some companies now mutual funds purchase some shares. Some individuals also follow their mutual fund strategy because mutual funds is managed by professional uh, professional managers. The negativity bias, you know, uh, many of the negativity bias. Uh, you know, you you might have uh, seen some people that uh, they they may say that the, the vacancies are very low, very less in government colleges. So why we are putting strain on uh, learning all these things? So this is a negativity bias. So you don't bother this. But uh, initiation, all list of the different So the vacancies will come up. Uh, some people, uh, some teachers will be promoted as principals. So we be positive always. Uh, uh, in stock market, uh, in many investors have missed the bull market rally because of the fear that it will reverse suddenly. So market could be going but kare alka rana the market bull bull rally will participate. The lavru jai ki meta na market yar ni pua mane jai ki. They may feel that the market will down soon. So that is negativity. But the market will not down. Market will uh, cover the all kind of resistance. Sometimes the market will go up. So that is negativity biases we should avoid negativity biases. Then, uh, framing biases. Uh, uh, framing biases is very important. How people framing a particular event. So, I can, re I can read two sentences. Uh, your investments increases by 13 percentage over the course of the year, but loses 3 percentage of that gain due to some year end market volatility. So suppose an investor uh, increases by 13 percentage, one year return 13 percentage, but uh, uh, at, at the la in the last month he reduced uh, three percentage of the gain due to some year and market volatility. The second statement it has been uh, written as uh, investment increases in value by 13 percentage over the course of the year. The market hit a rough patch near the end of the year, uh, uh, but you are able to hold on to 10 percentage of your gain. Market is very fluctuating, but he can be able to make it up, maintain 10 percentage. The people always try to prefer the second sentences, sentence rather than the first sentence. This is called framing bias. It's because of the framing effect. How we can, uh, some companies, they usually prime the sentences which, uh, which positively influences the investors. Some people will be, uh, will be influenced these biases, framing biases. And the um, bandwagon effect, uh, bandwagon effect is a psychological phenomenon in which people do something primarily because other need, uh, regardless of their own beliefs. Means, uh, when there is a bull market rally or uh, uh, ask me at what time I can continue. It is scheduled for two and a half hours. From 6.45. Uh -huh. From 6.45, oh. it is scheduled for two and a half hours. Okay. So, I can cut 8.45. Late 45? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Unwagon effect. Uh... Warren Buffett become one of the most successful investors in the world by resisting the bandwagon effect. Warren Buffett is the person who who was a trader uh, from the very beginning of his career, and he uh, he survived uh, 
with this bias bandwagon effect he did not uh, go with the bandwagon effect his famous advice is to the investors that to be greedy when others are fearful and uh, fearful when others are greedy that means kore aalkar oru side lotu poom adinte koode poada maaru nikkuva avarella back back backward cheyumbo nammude aa area il poova nanu parayana but always i don't know is always it's uh, it's correct but uh, this is this is also a bias in the behavioral finance bandwagon effect and this is a bandwagon effect of bitcoin prices in 2018 you know the bitcoin uh, um, got uh, tremendous growth because of the bandwagon effect many people have invested in ban bitcoin but uh, after a particular point the bitcoin prices were reduced uh, in the mid of 2018 so uh, without any fundamentals or fundamental illada alkar bitcoin invest edondirikunu but uh, after a particular uh, moment the bitcoin prices were reduced this is a very good example of bandwagon and uh, uh, it increases by 50% 50 percentage from 2007 8 so in the performance um, Uh, best example of a bandwagon on us okay so without any fundamentals the market was uh, uh, increased is anchoring by or focalism is anchoring bias is also called focalism uh, the people will rely too much on pre existing information and the first data points they receive when making decisions so what is the information you had you believe is you strongly believe uh, the information which you had uh, found in the first time suppose for example if you first see a t-shirt that cost 1200 and second one that cost 500 and you even believe that the second t-shirt is cheap relative to the anchor in this case the anchor first t-shirt price influence your opinion even though the second t-shirt is a quality one you may feel that the second t-shirt is cheap because the price is 500 as compared to see in that is 1200 you have uh, invested in stock market investing in stock market by uh, i was an investor in 2000 from 2007 and i uh, i i i before i invest in a uh, purchasing in a share i always look for 52 weeks high price of stock so i always check the graph of stock uh, check the graph of grow stock and uh, find the 52 weeks high price so this 52 weeks high and 52 week low price are the base for some people's investment sometimes this may lead for bias then emotional bias uh, it's because of the emotions i already explained uh, people are uh, people are uh, always uh, emotions emotions uh, are very important characteristics of human beings so very important emotional bias post aversion bias is uh, people may feel more strongly about the pain from the loss than the pleasure from the equal gain so uh, so people may feel more strongly i don't know it's uh, this emotion to all people but some people majority of people feeling more on uh, strongly on the pains rather than the pressure uh, pleasure pleasure ne kaatim pain ne kududal weightage kodukuna aalkarana ulladu it may be due to the psychological disposition of human beings ellarum maanu nu parayunnilla but the majority people always giving stress to the pains rather than pleasure then over confidence you know some people are over confident when an investor feels that he is superior to others uh, you know many people uh, you may you might have seen many people they are over confident so i don't i don't i i, I wouldn't say that it is a bias but uh, over confidence uh, confidence is good in sometimes but sometimes it may it, it may have some kind of problems in the stock market the investment uh, over confidence is a dangerous thing but in the uh, in the life situation sometimes over confidence helping people to uh, for successful in us then he said by us uh, uh, in, in simplifying the things over simplifications 
you know, uh, 2008 financial crisis, some people predicted that 2008 there will be a crisis. But uh, the people in the stock market or uh, people uh, who research in the stock market, they did not take care of that warning. Uh, but uh, the market crashes after 2008 crisis and it is a duty coupling effort across the world. The market were crashed. Uh, simplifying the things is called uh, hindsight uh, uh, bias. Uh, so uh, uh, this is a major uh, bias in the stock market. Uh, many information we, are, we, we may get in the stock market, but we don't consider it. Uh, we may feel that uh, it it won't affect us. It won't affect us. So uh, the the loss may be the result of this kind of bias. So Robert J. Schiller informed that uh, he said that the overconfidence uh, is a re maybe the uh, a reason for hindsight bias, uh, a tendency to think that one would have known that actual events were coming before they happened. Uh, the, some people feel that uh, the world, the view of the world is more predictable than really is. I can predict everything, some people say. So our confidence and hindsight bias are very, very uh, relate, related bias. Then endowment bias is also very important bias. Feeling that we do own is more valuable than what we do not. So, when we discuss with other in traders and investors, whatever uh, the portfolios are holding by us are the good portfolios and our shares are best as compared to your shares. Such kind of attitude is endowment by us. So, Nyan invest in the better investment, Nyan invest in the better Allah and all the feelings. This is called endowment bias. Even though some uh, kind of uh, error happen in our portfolios, we may not accept that uh, due to this bias, endowment biases. <clears throat> House money effect is it was found by Richard Tyler and uh, Eric J. Johnson. Uh, uh, you know, uh, house money effect uh, is very simple. Uh, uh, stock market in the return, our return, which we invest in, but we do not uh, take our own capital. See, if any uh, 20,000 rupees stock market in the kitty, 20,000, I have got 20,000 rupees. That 20,000 I can invest further. But I, I, I do not spend uh, my own capital. So uh, there is a game, a show you, you might have heard about deal or no deal. So whatever income getting from the uh, game show, again, we further invest. But uh, we uh, do not take our own capital. This is called house money effect. The house money effect we left while investing, this is uh, this is a major bias. Uh, some people may be addicted to this bias. In the ano kitten, we are investing. Allah, we are on capital. We are not collecting. But it is good sometimes. But uh, people who takes a risk uh, uh, means uh, sometimes we may uh, we may we may not be able to position some good investment opportunities uh, when we have this kind of bias. Overreaction is another bias. Overreaction. Uh, there is a market crash, or sometimes, number uh, pattern uh, uh, stock sell ya, mend it right Then there is, when there is a problem in your bank, uh, you have heard that some notice or news that your bank is going to collapse. Uh, very next day or uh, the same day itself, you you are transferring the entire money to some other bank account. This is called overreaction. So uh, many people are addicted to overreaction bias. So this is overreaction Bitcoin again. Uh, it's hurting causes of overreaction. Overreactions. Another very important bias is procrastination. Procrastination means the act of delaying or spawning something without sufficient reason. Uh, I will show the picture of procrastination. So I don't do anything. I feel helpless. I feel guilty. I doubt myself. There are people attitude is procrastination and they just killing the time. 
some people they won't study the PSC examination because they have this kind of bias of procrastination. Why uh, the studies? Because they are uh, they are lazy. They are lazy to uh, learn things. Uh, uh, they may say that I don't know anything. I feel guilty. I I, I doubt myself. So uh, in research as also uh, there are we can find those people are procrastinated. So uh, in the investment also procrastinated. Uh, they they are lazy. Uh, uh, they are not able to uh, take risk. They are not able to uh, uh, even uh, even follow some tasks. They are a failure in their life. So this uh, this is very important. Our investment chain, but our valare valare conscious are we? Our worthy kind of paisa it to worthy orangam badilla. We don't we no means when our orangi kanya that will bad badly affect us. Then the gambler's fallacy or Monte Carlo fallacy. Gambler's fallacy, you know that. Uh, Anju pravishyo nashta pato aramata pravishyo kittu mo nalo the So there are people. Uh, I know the uh, the lost in five scratch of tickets did not win, which means this next time next one must be a winner. Again, namle uh, kondidum po. So there are stocks such as uh, uh, gamblers policy always uh, uh, always uh, this kind of character. Our uh, stock curriculum. Movie, but people, uh, some people uh, invest in those stocks. So, uh, this gambler's policy. So, mental accounting is another bias. Uh, mental accounting means uh, different values uh, people uh, place on money based on subjective criteria that often has detrimental results. Uh, you may pay $500 in an expensive restaurant. But uh, you don't pay uh, two hundred dollars in a middle mediocre restaurant. So uh, the, in a, in an expensive restaurant, you may feel that you are sophisticated. So uh, that is mental accounting. Uh, many people have this kind of mental accounting. We will only hotel go to tips. Like I but cherry hotel go to a tips in the paisa avolo cherry hotel go to food work. So this is mental accounting. So there are a lot of influences of effect of biases. You can learn from the books. Market crashes are the result of biases. So this is an essay. Then investment strategies to avoid bias. So we have techniques of debiasing. So we can use the debiasing techniques uh, with the help of a psychologist. Uh, we can reduce the biases, uh, the stages of debiasing processes, how to eliminate our biases. First of all, we have uh, we need uh, better awareness about our, our own biases. Then take a decision, analysis, planning, action, follow-up. Uh, these are the stages of debiasing processes. And there are uh, the techniques uh, which uh, which used by the people to avoid bias. Understanding the market anomalies. Anomalies I already explained. Uh, then avoid market uh, overreactions. Uh, the high frequency trading is very important. Uh, there are institutions uh, doing this high frequency trading with the help of some algorithms. They are in a second they purchase a huge amount of stocks or huge amount of mutual funds or exchange traded funds, and they can beat uh, uh, like us individual investors. So there is a uh, saying that individual invest individual people are uh, are losers always in the stock market, but institutions are always winners. In in, the, in another saying that. Uh, one person will gain and another person will lose. But uh, the person who gains are very informative. But this kind of institution, you know, they are fundamentally well and they use supercomputers and algorithms to use the trading and they can beat the market and beat the individual investors. So, ready sunk cost trap effect. Uh, so, many people have this sunk cost trap effect that can be eliminated or reduced. Sunk cost means the past cost which cannot be recovered. So many people have past costs which cannot be recovered, but people still feeling that I can recover money. But it is a uh, it is a dream only. You cannot recover money. So we, you should avoid. For example, if you stock full light, you can stop it. If you recommend a stock, you can buy it at a Still, you believe that this price will go up. Uh, this price will go up, and uh, uh, 
uh, and you again purchase the shares, average the shares, but this price again go weak. 50 and all that, but it was a it was a So definitely you can avoid the sunk cost trap effect in the market. So behavioral finance means you do smart trades. Uh, you should not have uh, emotions and you have to maintain profitable relationships. Never allow something or someone that cannot love you back. The stocks are, uh, are a financial instrument. The stocks uh, does not have uh, emotions. Uh, the stock did not love you back. So you will learn to remove emotion from owning stocks. So nudging, uh, I will uh, uh, means nudging. Uh, the the is uh, is a policy decision. Nudging. Uh, the Richard Thaler got Nobel Prize for nudging theory. I will explain detail. These are the nudges. Uh, add to cart. Buy now. You can click it. So these are the nudges. Images of the nudges given by the uh, online uh, trading trading companies. Uh, nudging. This is another nudge. Who is the best player in the world? Ronaldo or Messi is the best dustbin. And uh, there is a board that who is the best player in the world. So you can put the dust in this bin to Ronaldo and Messi. So this is an, again another nudge, uh, nudging passionate football fans to keep uh, streets clean. And the Corona has to nudge people to stay indoor. These, the Corona has used by uh, the authorities uh, to influence the people to stay in indoor. And this is another, this is a very interesting thing. One of the most famous applications of Nazi Amsterdam authorities painted a house fly uh, on the urinal providing users to target it to NM. This reduced the spillage on bathroom floor by 18%. They painted a house fly and the effect was tremendous. And the Stockholm city nudging its citizens to use stairs by turning them into keys of piano. 70% of the citizen preferring stairs over the escalator. So the stairs are pianos, and then the people using uh, started using stairs uh, rather than escalators. So this another uh, in example. Uh, every uh, every step of uh, stair stairs, there is a um, burn uh, burn one calorie, two calorie. Then the people try to uh, use the stairs rather than lift and escalators. So this is a uh, this really happened even. This is not book written by Tyler and Sunstein, uh, improving decisions about health, wealth, and happiness. The nudge. So it's, nudge is very used in, uh, in policy decision making uh, for nudge or increasing the tax compliance in India. So many SMS you will get the tax uh, collected by the government, which is used for the purpose of the public services, so that the people uh, will be influenced by this and pay more taxes and they, they do taxes regularly, they do pay taxes regularly, then reducing dropout rate in poor families. Parents can be informed about the average income gains uh, from spending on or more year in the school for children. To increase savings rate, uh, people can be offered specially designed savings account. These are not just uh, so many applications in behavioral economics, you know, Betty Patao, Betty Bajao, uh, so many things, Socha Bharat mission uh, not just were used, and Betty Bajao, Betty Prava not just were used. Give it up, LPG subsidy, another uh, not just used by the government, very intellectually. And then deficient market hypothesis, there are uh, cornering and you can learn from the books, inefficient markets, circular trading, price tricking, etc. So uh, the last concluding remarks, don't get me wrong, love is a wonderful thing, you can love your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, your home, your work, your country, or even the stock market. You can love the fact that you may have made a lot of money in the stock market, but you should never, never love a stock. Thank you. Any, any questions? Okay, Thank you, sir. Thank you for your class. If anyone have any questions, please do post it in the chat box. So we are running short of time. I know that is 8.50. So already 
we explained the expected utility theory means uh, we are giving emphasis on the utility, but the prospect theory means the future gains. That is a distinction between the expected utility did not consider the uh, future expected gains. Okay. So you can detail, uh, you can detail, we'll get it from the books. Uh, so I have explained the points only. You can elaborate with the help of good textbook. Prasanna Chandra's books you can use for behavioral finance and investment management. Uh, it's a very good book. Uh, Case-wise, uh, it has been stated. Dr. S. Kevin's uh, books also good. So hope you uh, hope you have enjoyed the session. I feel that there is no more doubts. Bhagavadi. Yes, sir. I think no more doubts. Okay. So <laughs> it's my duty to um, render my vote of thanks to Bijus sir, and on behalf of the Alumni Association of the Department of Commerce, I thank uh, Bijus sir. As uh, the comments on the feedback session comes, like it's such a uh, very deep us with a lot of information and uh, as some of them said it's exactly a classy presentation i don't think within this much time any teacher could uh, give us such a big portion in such a short time so uh, once again on behalf of everyone sir all the participants and the teachers and everyone including the alumni association i thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you Ayodhi, for the good words thank you all uh, uh, we can wind up uh, good night and uh, best of luck uh, day after tomorrow, one more session uh, from my side. Uh, I deal with derivative market and uh, SAPM stock, security market and portfolio analysis. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you.